So this year's graduating PhDs from physics selected Ruby Lai to represent them. Ruby hails from Athens, Georgia. She completed her undergraduate degree at, at Harvard. Maybe she didn't get into Stanford. <laughs> she has focused her research on materials physics and advised her deeply. After graduation, Ruby will work for the Gates Foundation on water and sanitation for developing countries. <laughs> this important day for our physics graduates. Today is a celebration not only of the completion of the degree, but of the process of achieving that degree. The PhD is really hard. <laughs> I know all of you are so proud of your graduates, but I think after this talk, I hope you'll be even just a little bit prouder. PhD students face twice the incidence of significant symptoms of depression or anxiety as compared to other higher advanced degree candidates or compared to their peers who are similarly well educated. This amounts to one out of every three graduate students that are facing these symptoms at any given time. I think we can agree that this is something important that we need to work on um, in academia and this is something we can work on together. I believe that the first step is talking about it openly and without shaming anyone. The stigma surrounding mental health is understandable. Up until the most recent decades, very few people received any treatment for mental illnesses. Actually, it was only in 1987 that the first effective antidepressants were released in the United States. And it was only in the 90s that effective, clinically effective talk therapies were established and formalized. So it was not so long ago, but the situation is different now. One out of every five Americans have symptoms of depression or anxiety, and we have effective ways to help these people. So it is time to talk about it. Now I'd like to share with you a little bit about my story. When I started here, everything was awesome. I had kicked butt in college, ready to do the same, and I was just so darn sure of myself. Every decision I had made previously had led to success after success, to best case, to best case scenario after best case scenario. Well, I got the wind knocked out of that sail in high school, and it was really, really hard at times. I've struggled with depression and continue to do so. I'm saying this out loud to you today to call attention to this issue and how widespread it really is. I'm saying it's possible for someone who seemingly has quite a lot going on for her to struggle with this too. It's not weird. And sadly enough, it might even be a little bit normal for a PhD student. As for actions we can take to help, we can first listen non-judgmentally. We can, can, we can be more compassionate to others and also to ourselves. We can know the resources available for assistance, and we can, can all contribute to a positive and inclusive working environment. We can share our own struggles too, so that others know that it is hard that they're not alone in their struggles, or failures, or grief. To the graduates, I would like to congratulate all of us for getting here, day by day, for persisting, for keeping at it even when it feels like you haven't made any progress for months. To our family, friends, advisors, mentors, and especially our parents, thank you. You did a fine job. You've raised a heck of a kid, and it's thanks to your teaching and support that made us hear the people who can make it here today. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you.
Thank you, Ruby, for your very thoughtful speech.